Um, Inside is an SBS program where audience members are invited to discuss a topic. And they're all invited on the basis that they have something to do with this topic. They're stakeholders in the topic, and that's what you are. Now, if you're my class, we've all done quite a bit of research now. And just to make you feel what we call protected in your role, I might have asked you to get a little item of costume or something. So you might have got a lab coat, or you might have got a jacket, or you might have got a name badge, or something like that, so that you are protected in your role. So just imagine that. I'm just letting you know that's a, a good step to put in the process. Because in this role play, I'm not going to be the teacher. I'm not Joe. I'm going to be someone else. And you know who you are. So I'm going to um, take you there. Are you ready? Good evening, everyone. We'll shortly go to air, but before we go to air, there's a few things that I just need to let you know. Um, If you look around the studio, you'll see that there are cameras around. I don't want you to look at those cameras um, because it's very disconcerting for the viewers at home, so just don't uh, look at the cameras at all. The other thing you'll notice is the boom mics, and as you speak, those mics will be uh, moved across in front of you uh, so that we can hear your voice. Don't worry about them. They're not going to hit you on the head or anything. We just have to have them there or else we won't hear what you're saying. My job in, in tonight is to try and get all of you to have your say uh, in this debate. And I um, think we're going to have a very exciting program. I think we're ready shortly to go to air. What's that? We've got 10 seconds. That's 10, 9, Good evening, and welcome to tonight's program of Insight. Stem cell therapy is a burgeoning area, and many people are seeking assistance and looking for hope in stem cell therapy. But formal research is struggling to keep up with the demand. Tonight we've got people in the audience who have got some clear thoughts about this. First of all, you have had some successful treatment lately. Would you like to tell us about what your experience has been? Uh, yeah, so I had uh, stem cell therapy uh, about three months ago um, to uh, deal with uh, cancer that I'd, I've had uh, for the last 12 months. Um, I had my treatment, as I said, three months ago, uh, and it's had currently it's had some, some good success. Um, I had to spend a while in hospital uh, to make sure that the stem cells had uh, had taken through my bloodstream, um, but as as I've said, the the doctors are really happy with how um, how it's going. Okay, so it's a very good news story from your perspective. Okay, we've got other people who have been thinking about it. You've you've actually got a family member that you you're in, you're concerned about. Can you um, tell us about your experience? Yeah, my husband he's really sick. He's been diagnosed with MS, um, and his prognosis is not good. We have tried absolutely everything we possibly can and he's deteriorating very quickly. So we are looking into stem cell therapy overseas. Um, It's going to cost a lot of money and it's very risky, obviously, travelling overseas. We don't know a whole lot about it just yet, but that is looking like it's going to be our next option. Okay. And look, we have someone who is a private provider of this sort of thing. So you've heard uh, this positive story, someone who's looking for this kind of thing. What have you got to say about it? I'd say have a try, like there's no reason we can't have a try, especially if you've tried all the other options. Um, Personally, and I think um, Will here is like someone to show for it, I think we can have success with it. Um, And I think it is the way of the future. Okay, now you are a researcher in this area. Um, You've heard that from our private provider here. What's your view about um, stem cell therapy and and the slow pace of of, um, formal research? Yeah, so formal research here in Australia, it, it... It's, it's due to um, a bit of a lack of funding, but we are still uh, moving forward and trying to uh, get as many possible like cures for some of these diseases. So we can now you're, I think, thinking about stem cell therapy. Yeah, at right? the minute, I'm just us? trying to weigh up my options. Obviously, it's pretty risky. Okay, so, so you're, what are the risks that you're concerned about? I'm going overseas, and if it doesn't go 100% getting back here and not being supported by the healthcare system because of having gone overseas, um, 
and it, obviously it's a lot of money and if it doesn't work then that's a bit of a waste. Okay. Uh, so, you know, do, if it was available in, in Australia and had been properly tested, would you jump in yeah, there? Yeah, definitely. I'm um, struggling with other options at the minute. So. so, and what can I ask? What's your... Um, MS. MS. Okay, so it would certainly give you a better prognosis. Yeah, definitely. All right, now we've got someone here from the uh, medical board, I believe. Um, you've heard, you know, we've heard private providers who are offering uh, stem cell therapy now, researchers who are suggesting it takes time. What's your view on this? Well, our view at the, the medical board is that um, we're interested in, in medical evidence, solid medical evidence that uh, is obtained through um, properly conducted clinical trials. And you have to ask yourself, why is it that uh, this therapy isn't available in Australia? Uh, Australia has one of the, uh, the best medical uh, systems in the world. And why do we have that? Because it's well regulated, it's carefully regulated. We only advocate um, treatments that have been clinically trialled thoroughly. You had your treatment when it was still a little bit in the investigation phase. And yet, Correct. And yet it was great success for you. Um, you. You perhaps haven't got a lot of time to be waiting for this you know, proven evidence. Um, would you be waiting for 100% or would you be prepared to go for it if it was a 50% chance of improving your problems. In Australia or overseas? Well, in Australia, yes. Would you? Oh, if it was 50%, I guess it's worth a risk. You'd be happy to have it. And for your... Oh, Sorry, if I can interject. Yes. Uh, oh, as no, a regulatory no, body, it's inappropriate right. to ask uh, someone yeah. whether... It, obviously, they'd, they'd want to be going for something that's going to save their life. That's where mm. the regulatory body comes into it. As uh, Ian and Jared both mm. said, the research just isn't there at the moment. Um, it's... The people who are willing to travel overseas, uh, potentially to be uh, you know, taken on by charlatans uh, with no proven um, backing. It costs millions upon millions of dollars to get a drug onto the market, um, and about seven years of, of research and, uh, and whatnot. And uh, it's just such a, a fresh and emerging industry that you just can't, just can't say at the moment. Well, I suspect there's people who don't feel as if they can wait that long. How are you feeling about it? And as Ian said, Australia does have this great medical system and like research teams that support it and that's why we have these systems. Mm. And as you've said, it takes seven years worth of research. So if we are going to be behind the mark in starting, if we're looking, if we're waiting for everywhere else to see how their results are and then we begin, don't you think it would be better for us to get involved in these clinical trials now, start investing and then see where that takes us? I think that that like... Maddie, my husband, they can't, they don't have this time to wait forever. Don't we have the right to try? And on that note, we'll conclude our program for this evening and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, all stand up. Stand up and go like that. Shake out. <laughs> so if you must, students, you take off your costume and take off your name badge and take a seat back down again. And I'll pull up the chair too. Would you try? Would you yes. Why would you do it, Jared? Because I don't want students to be sitting there just listening to whatever I'm saying. I want to get them up and moving and get them more involved in certain things, especially doing it, like, using drama as it, it's very good because, it's like, of course, students can be creative, imaginative, and they can also have a lot of fun with it as well, but while learning all these biological concepts at the same time. So I reckon I'll... Have you learned something today? Yeah, yeah I'd, I've learned something. I always learn something. And that's why I'm a teacher, because I love to learn. Um, but I'm not very much ahead of you, you know. I've done this a few times now, so I've gathered a bit of knowledge. But I always forget and have to go back and, you know, read up uh, so that I've got the terminology there and, you know, concepts and ideas. So, um, you know, you can just be a step or two ahead of your students in these things. But if you're the teacher who thinks you have to blah, blah, blah all the knowledge then you feel, I would feel terrible teaching you. But because we're creating knowledge and understanding together, it takes the pressure off me. So, yeah, good point. You want your students to be active. Yeah, definitely, especially in science, because a lot of the time you do see a lot of, I've seen a lot of classes where they've all just been sitting there getting talked at, and it's just like, where are these activities coming from, come on, guys? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. 
So, yeah. so it just gives you another tool in there. One of the things about this sort of setup is that, or where people are almost are obliged to make a contribution, yeah. they are obliged to formulate ideas in their mind, and in that process, they're beginning to understand. Yeah. Whereas in an ordinary class, it's easy to hide behind um, the rest of the class and just. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. So you, you can't shut up. <laughs> and if you were 20 students, I'd be getting around to everyone. Um, there'd be, you know, three researchers and there'd be three people on the, you know, and we'd have other representatives, media, politicians, religious um, leaders and so on. So there's even more views in there. But I'd make sure that everyone had to speak just as Ian's suggesting because people are surprised. Did you surprise yourself? Did you surprise yourself a bit? At your authority, Chris pipes up and says, "Oh, you know, just a minute." Like, yeah. you know, I and this going. is what Dorothy <laughs> Dorothy Hedges is a great drama uh, pedagogue, and she talks about she invented mantle of the expert. Mantle is like a cloak of the expert, and she said when she worked a lot with yeah, well children through to adults, and she said when you give them the role of an expert, like a researcher. They suddenly speak with a vocabulary and a sophistication that they don't speak, we don't use as students. In playing the role, you know, they can't, they rise to that challenge. And it's very interesting. It never fails me. I've done this with primary students right through to, you know, academics. And, um, you know, it's always amazing to see the change in register and that people surprise themselves that they know more than they thought they knew. What what else is interesting about it? Anything else? I think it's um, it's another while well, you're in character, but I mean obviously you, your students, like you said, you're giving them uh, a bit more time to research their role a little bit yeah. and what they need to know. So um, it takes on the pedagogy. Even though you're in character, you're still peer teaching sort of yeah. thing. So. Um, remember more what you, of what you teach so yeah. it's going to cement that in their minds when they're teaching it yeah. and I think also if it comes from their peers and you know if they make it pretty funny or if they have a bit of debate as well it's still going to stick in other kids minds as well yeah um, yeah that's right it, funny doesn't matter you know if you'd been if someone had said something that was funny and we all laughed that's good actually because yeah. you are enjoying learning you know we, ha we can share a joke together so I don't get cross if someone you know makes a joke I just you know enjoy the learning with them. Mm. And you're learning and you're reading with a purpose, aren't yeah. you? I mean, when you go and do that research, it's not just to complete some sort of yeah. assignment, it's to come yeah. back and yeah. communicate it to other people. So everything I've done today has had a pressure of time, have you noticed that? Mm. And um, now, that might not produce the greatest quality of research, it's, you know, don't have time for depth, but at least we get, we're moving through quite quickly. There's, there's a momentum there. Um, not letting you slack off and start thinking about you know lunchtime or whatever you know I'm just moving you through and you've got three minutes to do that and five minutes on that and then we're going to show this so there's always these goals and this wouldn't be appropriate for every lesson but every now and again something like this can help you to introduce a topic and to cover some ground that then can lead into more sort of sustained or focused study anything else about it you want to say I think it's good how all the different opinions are considered as well. Mm. Yep, so one of the things that flashed on the screen before was this point of view tool, so one of De Bono's thinking tools, but you know, it's common sense really, that when you're looking at a complex issue, you've got to understand how many different perspectives are brought to bear on that issue. That's why it's controversial, because people have such different views. And so, um, in order to understand that, we need to kind of pick out those views, and by articulating them, we can we can really understand the issue from a whole lot of different perspectives.